As Michael Garcia goes through the end of his day, organizing his inventory and preparing to lay his head down to rest for another night, a sudden, startling realization settles in. The cool air from the refrigerator has ceased. The smell of rotting cabbage permeates the air. The sudden fear that his food supply is falling apart before his very eyes makes itself known. We jump back in in the middle of a problem. I was trying to finish some off-camera work, as I always do, and uh, suddenly I went to go grab some food before I went to bed, and it seems as though stuff is starting to rot. It just stopped here, and I don't know if the refrigerator isn't working. And if that's the case, why? It looks like the refrigerator has stopped running. Yeah, and it actually seems like so has the oven. Even though the generator is on and connected, it's not actually working. This is a problem, not because I'm going to be starving to death if I don't get food in my system. That's clearly not the case, but it's still uh, problematic because it means all that food that we're going to be stashing, all the cabbages are all just going to start going bad and I don't know what's causing it. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep and see what it looks like come morning and hope for the best, not the best entrance to a new episode that I've ever had. I certainly was hoping for a bit better than that, but there's nothing I can really do about it, unfortunately. You kind of have to make do. And I wonder if it has to do with the positioning of the uh, the generator. If the generator is like only hits like a certain range, I don't know how it works. I assume it would power w the entire building of the building it was in, but if it doesn't, then then we have a, we have a problem. I can't even turn this on. Yeah, th this whole second floor. Yep, I lost all my cabbages. Hmm. But the the it works downstairs. How bizarre. Well, I think that means that we need to have the generator out front, which is a huge bummer. But we'll go ahead and uh, disconnect it and we'll move it out front. It's a pain, certainly, but uh, we just got we got to do what we got to do. It definitely puts the generator in more of a dangerous situation. There's no question about that. If the zombies show up and they want us dead or, or they end up surrounding our house, the generator is going to be one, if not the first thing to go. But if we can, uh, if they can ignore it for the most part, then we'll probably be in a better situation. Hopefully this works. And we'll go upstairs and see if it's uh, actually properly working now. We're due for <clears throat> We're due for the cabbages to uh to get up and uh, go. So we we should have food replacement soon. I'm just mostly worried about everything over here. Yeah, it's got to be a range thing. It's got to be a ranged thing. Yeah, and everything's back to being cold again. What a bummer. Well, we'll throw everything into the garbage here. We threw all of it into the garbage and there's still tons of it left. Oh, what an absolute bummer. Well, well, it's certainly no good way to start an episode. <clears throat> It's, uh, at the very least, I'm glad we figured that out. 
I, I wonder, you know, I, I bet you if I mess with it, I might be able to keep it behind the fence. Or maybe I should just build a little protection fence around it separately. That could go a long way to helping things out. But needless to say, uh, that definitely puts a bit of a damper on us. And we're going to want to make sure we have more uh, water soon for our plants as the rain slowly turns into snow. Uh, and we are going to need to start filling our water with that. Oh, well, what an unfortunate situation, but hey, welcome back to Project Zomboid, everybody. Oh my god, the mess in front of our, our house is huge as well. I want to check the mechanics real quick, and while we're checking the mechanics, I want to say, hey, sorry there hasn't been a video in a couple of days. Um, oof, we need a new hood, we need a lot of new things, we kind of rammed through a lot of stuff here. Uh, our muffler is in a, is in dire need of, of, no, our muffler is actually fine. It's a little louder than I'd like, but we are, we're okay. It's mostly the front of the car that needs, okay. Okay, thank you for making noise. Oof. Where did you come from? Good God. That scared the hell out of me, man. Our gas situation is gonna be rough too. Um, we need more gas, but it's been a couple days since I've played. Uh, I'll be honest, I, you know, there was a few days there where burnout was was feeling real, uh, if you're if you're curious. And I apologize because that does mean sometimes that I end up, you know, once or twice a month I end up missing a video. But I learned really early on, uh, and by really early on, I should probably say like four years into doing this, that burnout is a real thing. And when there's a lot of just competing things vying for your attention, needing you to get work done uh, for many different projects. The uh, the burnout, it can be real and can happen, come on to you real, real quick. And instead of forcing myself through the burnout to create while I'm feeling as bad as I am, what I like to do is usually take a day, maybe two, just step away, take a deep, deep breath, uh, kind of just distance myself from my office and my work for a little while give my like a, give myself a day off because in this job There is no such thing as a day off uh, Very rarely do you get an even when I'm traveling. I'm usually traveling for work more than anything else um, But point being I like to try and recognize the symptoms of burnout as soon as I can and try and put distance between myself uh, And work just so I can come back and create because one of the things that I hate and something I've learned uh, really early in doing this as a career, not to get bizarrely inside baseball, is that when I, everybody deals with burnout differently. When I get hit with burnout, my first reaction is to say F it and work through it and not care. And what I learned really, really badly and, and, un, and unfortunately, maybe a couple years ago, which was the last time I really pushed through burnout, um, was that that doesn't fix the burnout in any way whatsoever. <laughs> it has, does not help or fix anything. In fact, it makes it way, way worse because then when you finally do get away from your office for a few days, maybe you're going on a work trip or whatever and um, you know, you're know you stepping away from the daily grind to, to kind of work on a different sort of grind, uh, what ends up happening is you all of that burnout, all of that crash hits you kind of all at once and uh, Oof, this is not good. Let's let's push up and over here. I'm trying to see if I can get to the gas station. Uh, anyway, it'll hit you all at once, and then it just you you're, you feel like you're about to fall apart, and it's just not pleasant whatsoever. So I've tried to recognize the symptoms of burnout and to stave it off for as long as I can. One for my own personal well-being, because if I'm not in a good mindset, I'm not going to be able to provide the highest and uh, quality type of content that I've been trying to produce here on your Illuminati podcast. Diving back into Judge Mathis, my streams, all that stuff. Um, but for you, I know I want it to be entertaining and I want to be able to tell a story and it's hard for me to get into the mindset of a character or tell a, a proper story and keep a narrative kind of focused and coherent if my mind is too busy telling me and freaking out and screaming that it doesn't want to do this and it can't do it even if I'd, if, even if I'd rather it just shut up. Um, that's kind of where I am and that's kind of where I've been for the past two or so days It's why I've stepped away and why you didn't have an episode yesterday and the or not yesterday. Yeah yesterday at this point I'm sorry uh, and why um, And and also why you only had Mario Maker a few days ago uh, Okay, we're gonna back out here. I was hoping I could at least take one out Sorry, we're getting into focus mode here while we deal with the pack of Zeds real quick. 
That's fine. I don't want to get too near that patch over there. I'm more concerned about pulling them. I guess the point is, uh, I apologize for taking a couple days to myself. I'm back. I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, I, j I went to go see Spider-Man Far From Home, which I haven't been able to see yet because I've just been so busy, and it was awesome, and I love Spider-Man, he's my favorite superhero, and man, oh man, it was just nice to get a, to, to take a deep breath for a minute. Okay, let's be smart. We'll do one at a time here. And we're gonna take some beta blockers, and we're just gonna do some clearing. Because we're, we're the gas station, whether we did a good job last time or not, the gas station is, at least in some fashion, approachable right now. Wherein it wasn't before. Okay, one knife down. I'm just gonna try and take out as many as I can real quick with just a knife. It's fine. One more. Okay, perfect. Knives are a godsend. We're not even that wet either, which is super good. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, we want to fill up some gas, but I'd like to start walling it off. Ideally, we could just, we could wall off from here down just to get in, um, let's see, just to get enough of a safety situation. I don't even need everything walled off otherwise. We could probably just wall off to here and just have a nice little entrance for our car or just not even bring our car in and just keep this area relatively safe so from here down out and around square this off with the generator inside and we should be looking good all right let's work on that let's see if we can get that started having a safe gas station we can go to during the winter when everything is going to get really really nasty it's going to be good for us Hey, buddy. Can I get you to fall over? Locked, that's okay. Let's get a lunger. Okay. She's looping around the back. We're gonna go through all of our knives, I think. But for a quick cleaning like this, this is uh, the perfect tool. And Michael Garcia has gotten so good with just melee, close range, hand-to-hand -hand combat. That going up to zombies and just stabbing them in the chin, through the brain, and watching them crumple beneath him. At this point, it's just par for the course, baby. Okay. Now. One plank. So if I wanted to create a wall, I need two planks, and then I would need to turn it into an actual wall. So, is there anything I can start deconstructing? Okay, we have a saw. How safe are we to start deconstructing is my concern then. Because through the back door, we look all right. We have one plank here. There's a second floor as well. Let's start doing it. What just happened? 0% success chance. That's not what I was expecting at all. Oh, I did not mean to, to put that in my bag. Wow, we can't actually do any of it. Okay. I guess we'll check upstairs, see if we can do that. Okay, let's try this. Some scraps. Slowly make our way back upstairs. It's been a while since we've been up here. This is fine. I'm happy to just kind of disassemble everything on the second floor. Anything to start up. My my worry is how difficult was it going to end up being to wall this area off. And I'm a, I'm a little concerned it's a little bit more difficult than I was ready for. <laughs> uh, ooh, a padded jacket. Let's take that for winter. Everything else is going to get dumped on the ground real quick. We can get all these counters as well. Um, I don't think I left any knives here. But let's quickly go through this area and let's just start breaking as much down as we can for our sake. We're starting to get hungry. I don't think there's any food here, unfortunately. 
Oh, this the sink is there, so we can't do anything with that. Okay. Let's start scooping some stuff up. Extremely heavy load. I'm just gotta be ready. We're gonna have a knife out. I just wanna get outside and see what we're dealing with. Even if we can just look out the front door. Okay. I just wanna set up some frames, more or less. So across like that. Up from the wall, across is all we need. We don't even need to go that far out. We can go even closer. So let's let's just do it to like here. We'll start getting some frames up. Okay, it's better than nothing. Do we have any more planks? We've got one. Drop that on the ground. We're very hungry and under a fairly heavy load. But this is the idea. I hope you understand what I'm trying to go for here. I just, this is why we need an axe, because if I had an axe, I could just go to the woods nearby and I could just start grabbing what I want. Turn those off. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Slowly glide our way around. Ah, yeah, man. This is rough. The, the, our, our, our muffler is definitely not doing so well. Let's swing back then. Let's we'll see if we can get some uh, replacements for our car parts while the sun is still up. Honestly, this parking lot right here looks prime. There might even be some food in the nearby area, but I'm just gonna back the car in so we have a quick escape if we need it. All right, let's take a look. Muffler's at 65. We need a, basically one in a much, much better condition, and then we need to get lucky on uninstall and install. I see you. Come here, pal. I'm just gonna push you over. I'm not gonna waste any durability. Well, maybe I will on the hammer a little bit, just a tiny bit. Thank you. Still no luck. Tote bag. Locked. Maybe we'll get lucky on the muffler here. It's in good condition, let's try. 73. If we can't pop it before it drops to 60, then it's not worth it, okay. Now the question is, can we get it installed on our car without fudging it up too much? Because we have what? Let's make sure we use the right muffler. Old muffler type standard. Is there a way to tell what kind of muffler we have? Guess not. I mean, we got lucky last time. I just want to get a better one on there. I'm starting to actually hurt. Just due to how much I'm carrying. Let's drop that. Let's drop that. Yeah, we were definitely causing ourselves some injuries here. Okay, muffler's out. Performance muffler. Ooh. Well, we'll try this one, and it looks like it works. Are we gonna injure it more than anything? We are. This is a mess. Come on. Are we dying? Not really. Now our performance muffler is gonna be better than this one. Man! That's super rough. Oh, that's also real bad, but we'll see where they end up going. Our mechanic skill desperately needs to be better. All right, well, let's keep looking around. Uh, the gunshot is gonna, let's, let's pull the music away, I apologize. The gunshot is gonna pull a lot of zombies around, so I'm not quite ready to be moving my car around with the bad muffler attached to it quite yet. Uh, this is, you know, we'll try. It's an 88% chance to pull this one out. I mean, it's an 88% muffler. Okay. All right. I see how this is going to go, and that's all right. We'll make it work. I'm just glad we got to see it coming. 
Any lungers? Both of you? Any fast lungers? Not really? Good. No luck on the on the axe get. Let's let's peep this building for some quick food. We're getting very hungry. Ugh. Maybe not. We might just want to go home, but if I can get this mu muffler. Okay, let's try and pull this muffler off. Ideally without any problems. It's an average muffler. I'll take it if we can get it off. Do we get experience for failing? That's that's key. If we're not getting experience for failing, 52.25. Well, we succeeded there, so there's no way I'm going to know. All right, dude. I really don't want to mess with you too much. You weren't going to fall over. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, let's look at our skills. Mechanics. 55.25. Let's see what happens when we inevitably fail pulling this thing off. Okay, never mind. We succeeded. Okay, let's take a look at our skill now because I've just failed again. 57.5. 57.5. Yeah, we don't we don't actually gain experience if we fail. That's insane to me. This is one of the first times I think I've I've disagreed with a mechanic <laughs> from from the Project Zomboid devs. I'm sure it's not, but it's the most recent for sure. Uh, it definitely feels like a mistake. Uh, I feel like if you fail, maybe you don't get as much experience, but you should still get some experience. Come on. Please start. Thank you. What a weird little episode so far. Well, the only thing I can think of doing, really, is uh, just kind of going to cars and ripping them apart. Anything to give me the experience I'm going to need, which I very, very, very badly lack right now. But we need to eat, and we need to settle in for the night. An entire day just spent cleaning up some gas station, cleaning up some zombies, and getting some food. I think our next project's gonna be a big one. And ideally, I, I genuinely don't know what to prioritize, so maybe I'll, I'll take a look at the comments after I put this video up. Um, but I don't know if I need to be getting an ax first, if that's like the big thing I should be looking for, and or if I should be looking at getting my cars up and running first. I don't know. There's just a lot that I need to kind of consider. But for now, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up. It's been a shorter one for sure, but just need to kind of get back into the swing of things, and it feels good to do so. Thank you all for watching. Michael Garcia, we'll be seeing you soon.